We have uh, next in our story, Alexander Stubb, as we were talking about earlier. He's just put in his bid to be the latest candidate to become commission president. But when you take a closer look, you'll see that most have a lot in common. Eight people have put their names forward in the race to become lead candidate in their parties, including the EPP's other candidate, Manfred Weber, Jan Zaradil for the ECR, and Mara Shevchevich for the SND Group. The Greens have also put four names forward. The list of contenders follows a long-established pattern in EU leadership positions, a lack of diversity. This wall in the commission in Brussels showcases past presidents. All 12 are white. All are men. It's not just the Commission, the European Parliament has had 29 presidents, all white, and only two women. And for more on this discussion, I'm joined by Maya de la Bom, who uh, covers uh, European uh, Parliament and Affairs for Politico, and Sajad Karim, a British MEP with a group of European Conservatives and Reformists. Uh, Sajad, I'll start with you. I mean, we're talking about diversity, and this place is all about uniformity. Does that bother you? Well, the phrase pale, male and stale <laughs> comes to mind when I watch that sort of a clip because clearly the, the, the lack of proper representation of the European Union, the European Parliament and the institutions as properly reflective of the European Union as a whole, there's a long, long way to go. And actually I see regression rather than progression in that regard. Uh, following on from the last set of European elections, if you look, you actually see in the chamber behind us 40-odd uh, extremist far-right MEPs less than half that number from non-white backgrounds. Within the European Commission, less than 7% of employed people Why? come from diverse backgrounds. I think there's a, a number of reasons for that, um, far too complex to go into very quickly, sure. depending on the institution you're doing with. But the question shouldn't be just why is that, it's what are we going to do about that? Exactly. And Maya, because Politico has written uh, a lot of articles on you know, Brussels being blind to diversity, isn't anyone here bothered by that? I think um, there's a real issue with gender equality. I mean, enough in, to in do you? something about it. Like, yeah. yeah, there is a they, they, there is a problem of gender equality, and generally institutions are aware of it and are trying to make efforts. But when it comes to diversity, it feels to me that there is no. I mean, it's a very complex issue, but they don't. They're not making a lot of efforts to make this place more diverse, and it's all the more shocking that the EU. Uh, societies in general are diverse. I mean, I come from France, and France, society is diverse. So it should be reflected in the EU institutions. Exactly. As Sachet was saying, it's all about representation, isn't it? What is the impact then on policy, policy making, and on thinking when you have this kind of difference between lawmakers and, and population? Well, first of all, you end up with a real sense of distance between the decision makers and the citizens, because the citizens see that this is not properly reflective of society as a whole. So it's not just people from diverse backgrounds who feel that or people from you know one of the two genders that's uh, mis uh, underrepresented here but people generally get the view that actually this is not healthy for Europe and certainly those looking at Europe from outside when they see us preaching about equality about diversity and making sure that w our strength is our diversity then they say well you are nothing but words and so all of these things play out in one way or another and I think one of the most diverse is your group in fact the ECR so once the no. once the UK leaves I think diversity is going to go down I, 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 yeah. I would say if the UK <laughs> leaves. if okay yeah. optimism there.